You are playing in a band and you're performing. You're performing your songs. There's only one problem. The whole band is you. How to transition between songs if you're alone, but you want to sound like a band. That's today's video. You ready? Let's go and do it right now. Hey, what's up, I'm Mental Location, and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video. I will tell you about the ongoing process, our collaborative effort called The Dance Carousel. I'll tell you all about our really fastly growing community. And I'll tell you all about the events that we've got planned and on the mixer front that's also new. So stay tuned. Now this came because I had problems transitioning. I think there's a lot of people that have problem transitioning. I think I've done a few videos on the matter already, but since then my workflow has changed a lot. And where I was sending program changes between different machines so that if one machine would go into a different key range or song or track or sequence or how you want to call it, another followed in tandem. Transitioning is sometimes hard, you know, one machine goes to a different pattern. It's not a problem if you're staying in the same key, but if you're not staying in the same key or you want to switch genres or even if you want to switch up your tempos, it can be cumbersome if you're by yourself. Now, if you're octave one and you've got the guy jacking his head behind the mixer, making sure that whatever boo-boo you make on your machines is not audible, then you're lucky. But if you look over your shoulder and there's nothing uh, then this video is for you. I have now done a new way of transitioning where my machines are not all linked up in tandem. They are connected via MIDI. I can address the different machines by their own uh, respected MIDI channels, but it's not that if I switch a program change on one machine, another machine will do it. So I have to manually do it. The answer to it was a little bit simpler than I thought. I might have overcomplicated my thought process on it. Um, let's go get into it and let's see if this is something that could be beneficial for you. Is it still nerve wracking? Yes, a little bit. It is still a cumbersome situation. You have to think on your feet and you have to think on, okay, how does this work for me? But it's manageable. Now, uh, without further ado, let's go to the live set which is a new setup once more. And I'll go briefly, I'll briefly go over what I've got in the box and how we can transition. You ready? Let's go. Welcome and back to another um, changed setup again. This time I have the Micro Monster back on the desk. I've got the Taurus uh, uh, AS1 here, the Octatrack, the Black Box, and a MIDI Fighter and the Subsequent 37. There's also a J6 here. I have been experimenting, but you know what? It's um, a work in process, a progress. There is a RK008 as the hub. There's RK006 and there is a RK003, I believe it is. This is a small um, eight channel mixer. So that stuff that I've got lined up in here, which is the black box, also the Micro Monster and a few other things, I can now send into the Acid Box 3 here. And the Acid Box now takes care of filtering for that and goes to the desk. Drums are coming from the Octatrack. Um, I'm going to, go to do two patterns because this is an example. Now, how you set yourself up is to think in brackets. I've got uh, something sitting on the um, black box already. So if I was to just like mute all my drums here and engage this, we're going to start with the first pattern that is this. Now there's two things happening right now. I've got an arpeggio, that arpeggio is coming from the black box and then, as you can hear, where am I crooked? There you go. The audio was a bit on one side, but that can be just there. Okay, so what happens is I want to 
be able to address the filters and I don't want to do it on the MIDI fighter. And I've mapped away the filters of the black box, but the problem was that it's a dual concentric filter, so it's low pass to one side, high pass to the other side, and I just can't seem to get the sweet spot on where I wanted, want my sound to just go. So I'm using the Asset Box 3, and that is, yeah, the master filter, if you will. Um, I'm building up a track by building up suspense, and it's literally pointing in one direction while hiding something somewhere else. This, what's playing right now already, on a short envelope is already playing. It plays a theme. But that makes sense when we get to the next track. But I've already embedded it here, so if I use short envelopes, it becomes a percussive element. Using a little bit of resonance and the filter, you get that ticket, 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 ticket. And as you can hear on my arpeggio here, the same thing is happening. On the octa track, however, I have dedicated um, the eight tracks to different things. The eighth track is something that I can't mute or unmute because it's master track. The master track means that all the other tracks are running through it. So tracks one through seven are going through the master track. So on the master track, you can do different things. I have mapped the master track uh, to the crossfader and on the crossfader, I'm doing some tricks. That's reverb um, on the next track on the next song and there's a drum roll on this song. Tracks one to seven, one to six are drums, and track seven is a theme. A theme that will play so that, I always know track seven is going to house some musical information, which is very important for the trick that I'm doing. Let's go in and see if we can uh, yeah, enter a bass drum. Okay, I wasn't crooked. It was just the ARP coming in a little bit crooked. Okay, crooked meaning like one side is, is louder than the other. My kick drum, there's a new kick drum that I've made. In due time, if I perfected it, I will uh, obviously uh, make it available to you guys out there on my Patreon uh, page. But for now, let's see how this works out because I literally made it and it's not yet. Um, I don't know, I haven't tried it out in the club yet, so I do need to know if it's if it does what it does. Sounds promising though. Okay, I've got a um, closed hat here, 16s. As you hear, everything is doing the same thing, except for the kick. That's starting right here. You hear it here as well. And this, so that everybody knows we're moving forward in a certain direction. Let's get more drums in. Tom, and some sort of a clap. Got my hi on six. And that's interesting because if I go to track six and I place it here, you see that this bam, this trick right here is a conditional one. Which means that if I'm holding it down and I'm going here, it says trick condition one divided by two, so it's only playing the other half of the bar so to, to create longevity. Also, when I'm working with 16 steps in this case, I don't want stuff to become too repetitive. Obviously, dance music is repetitive, but if you can have certain things occur differently or at a different time, it will work. Now, as I said, on my track eight, I'm using a little bit of delay that's happening on that snare clap thing that I have got. The kick is gone, as you can hear, and my hats are also muted. So, this way you can easily go in. One, two, three, and... I've got a few things lined up on my um, black box as well, that are one shots, for instance. Things that you can see where it is. Fast. There you go. So this oh, sounds better. Yep, I'm liking it. Now, this is cool. Now let's add a snare in.
This snare is already playing on track 5. As you can see, it's all there. But it's all on a specific volume. But if I was to hold one down and or uh, hold this uh, scene B down, you'll see that the volume on this side is 9. And here is minus 64, which means there's no audio. So that way you can uh, play different things. Got a bass sample here. Now this is now a track is on its way, right? You can hear that little arp that's done its thing. It's like helping the track along, right? Now what I've done also is that I've got this track laid out in two separate parts. The bass line plays more melodic stuff, but it will only do that on my pattern two. Now it's just staying on that one specific vibe, right? So, which means that I can now go to the RK008 and say like, let's... For instance, select the tracks on which I've got things that I want to play. Bit of delay that's because on the far left I don't know if you can make it out on camera um, this is my space echo through which this thing is going let's get a little bit more delay cool now this is all the hamster wheel situation on which you dance when you're in the club right this is just what happens when you want to make a little bit more music obviously I think the bass line needs to change anything can stay like once people are latching onto that they're on that same thing let's go to a different pattern Back on the machine now. Ooh, so now it spans on, on. That's what it's playing now. I set myself up and then I've made different tracks on the same instrument so this RK008 which is a MIDI looper it doesn't make any sound but it records MIDI information it records what I'm playing so For instance, let's record it in, say. I missed a note there, but then you see, now it's recorded. You build up your track like so if you're happy with it hit record so that it's embedded make a breakdown here i've got a 16 bar atmospheric loop in the background that goes up and down over the span of 16 bars cool let's go back to pattern one filter down cool now that I think that I'm ready to um, 
to migrate. I've now migrated the first machine to the next page on which I already made sure that the cords are working. So that's already, already set up. Then I slowly take out this baseline that I've got right here on seven. That's on track seven. I'll go in, I'll filter it down. I'm gonna take it out. Filter this down so I can take it out. Now I'm going to start to introduce this sound right here. The arm is still playing, but I've filtered it down to the point where you can barely hear it, and this is overpowering it. So, taking this out, now we're going to go for. So the kick drum's out. Now you can play around with your new synth. Going to the next bank. So I have now switched to the next set of drums while I'm focusing on this thing right here. As you notice, my track 7 is off. And I've deliberately done that because my theme is already playing here. The theme for the new track is already playing there. But first, first things first, we're going to slowly introduce what we have right here. I'm going to function and arm all those tracks and go in. And then I'm there. Safely so. The Daysmith Torais AS1 is one of the most underestimated uh, machines ever, I think. Because when you use the editor, it's absolutely amazing. And it saved my uh, bot in a few uh, crazy predicaments. It's very techno machine, by the way. So I've got this techno R playing. I build up my drums here. Now I'm going to start to introduce that thing that I've got on track seven. Take my kick out. Again, something that plays along with what I have. Filter down. Drums in. I've got a tom playing that already is also tuned to the rest of the drums. So that if I take this out or this fails or something's wrong, you know, never know what happens, then you already got something that you can rely on. Let's make a drop where we take out the right symbol and take this out. Again, we do the same trick, kick out, right out. We're back to the ticket 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 ticket. It's really cool. So even if you were to think like, how can I transition? Maybe save your preset in two different places and send the program change to the next uh, to to your sound. Which is one trick to do it. Or I can now save this safely in this state. It's here, but I can save it like this. So I can always move it into in a track where I am. Right. So now I can do different things, build up the track from here and slowly think, of, okay, what is my next move? I've got this thing sitting also here, the audio thing is Micro Monster. Not so much using it now, but if I was to say like, I want to play something, I can go to, to a track. Well, it's playing already, let's see. Yeah, I've got something sitting there. Now let's make a break. It's a bit of a 303 here. We'll take out the kick, slowly open this up.
the right symbol. Slowly introducing this again. And there you go. And it sounds a bit like how a DJ would transition, but the, the, the big takeaway you need to take away from this is you can now look at the crown and determine whether this break needs to be 16 or 32 or even longer if, if you've got a blissed out crown that really gives you a lot of, you know, time, then yeah, obviously that's how you can manage it. What I've done though, is that I've made sure that I have access to all these different sounds. This goes down again. I guess I lied. I had the micro, other things, micro monster going through the quickie, the, um, the, the RK003 uh, mixer. But the problem is, the more I stick through it, the softer the, the audio levels are going to sound. So, and I wanted to have a little bit more direct access to this uh, machine myself as well. Let's listen to um, what we have drum wise, right? I'm digging this. Now what I've done is I have evolved my drums a little bit to where I think it needs to go a little bit, a little bit more in a, um, in a minimalistic session fashion. Now, get that 303 thing going. So yeah, nice. Reverb and open this up. So the two things that I'm using on this machine is the cutoff and the the, the release time. Opening this up, keeping everything closed so I can move in. My pads back in. And the only reason I'm using the audio thingies is I'm putting more stuff in there is just like for sake of space. Ideally, obviously, I would like to use an OB6 or a Tetra or whatever, but for now, just to have everything sit here. Filter down. And then slowly building it down again. Thinking of what's going to be my next move. We take out that ride, which is on five. Toms accidentally, but it works out. Now I'm going to make a switch to the next one, next track, and take out the team. Filters down. So slowly I'm going to go back to my drum. Taking out low end. Cool. Next bag. So now it's set up to go play the next bag. Again, I have reverb on this um, thing going. So, bank C corresponds with this thing here, which is on the third pattern, as you can hear. I think the high is a bit on the loud side, but yeah, you know. Let's turn it down a little bit. Okay. 
and then obviously move on to the next pattern here. So now I'm there, which means it's switched. And as you can see, my key aligns. Open it up, and now I can just like go in and improvise. Let's record it in. Not like that. <laughs> Okay, stop, again. There you go. I got my baseline in. And then this is still playing. You need to make sure that you're not opening this up because now the key is not going to align. But if you're smart enough to just have a lot of different presets going, you can now switch to that preset and play something else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the drums that I have. And now I'm going to just do something different. Take this out. Make a break now. Nice one. Now we're all in guns of the world now. Territory. So again, my drums do different things, and I try to just like keep the kick drum the same pretty much, but switch up the drums that are going over the top. Let's make a drop here. And this thing I've made to just like be some sort of a catalyst, everything works. I've got different panels here. Let's see what we've got here. Different pattern here. So this thing is moving by itself, right? And this is a helpful tool if I don't want to play music or I just want to do something else. This is how I would use a 303 or a DFAM or something that just runs and does something different and gets people to just like understand where you're coming from. So, in short, everything is done in a modular kind of fashion, not modular as in synthesis or modular as in, you know, this is my drum section. I'm only focusing on drums, but because I am also thinking, okay, I need a little bit of musical information. Track 7 is always dedicated to some kind of music and musical information. If you cannot make a track with six different stereo parts to make a drum sound, to make a drum track, I'm not so sure. 
you know? Now I'm using a drum box because for just how much stuff you want to take with you, it's sometimes better to just like condense everything down to, yeah, you know, to multitasking stuff. Okay, I guess that this is my process. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you think. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so that is my process. That's how I think of doing it because it gives me, like I said, room to pace and migrate to the next thing. Uh, think on what my next step is or where I wanna go. Um, yeah, so that's that. Listen. Um, on patreon.com slash analog kitchen is where you can support the vibe if you like this channel, if you like what you see, if you love what you hear, uh, and you've got too much questions, too many questions I should say, then that's your one stop shop to not only access to me, some access to me, that sounds a bit odd, but um, to the community that we have created, because there's a bridge between Patreon and Discord, and on Discord we've got like community driven panels even, so there's like-minded folks, there's peers out there that also might have the same questions that you have. Um, whether you're just starting out, whether you're a seasoned pro, um, if you love synths, if you just wanna browse around and you're thinking of getting synths, even if you're not a synth person or you're just like working in the door, it's a cool knowledge-driven, knowledge-based kind of uh, community. Um, I've also uploaded um, a video of which I'm proud, you can tell by my face. Um, of the working channel strip on the mixer. It's really amazing and it sounds wicked. So that dual concentric EQ that I envisioned, it's, it's sounding absolutely awesome. So I'm happy for that. So it's coming along. Um, so yeah, do check it out. The stuff is all, all there. Now, um, if you made it this far into the video, you, sir or ma'am, are an absolute superstar. I'd like to thank you. There's channel memberships also if you want to support. Uh, let me know what your setup is and let me know how your work flow goes okay now thank you for watching i'm in a little kitchen i'll catch you next week on another video keep watching this space
I'm a little bit of 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 a little